Okay. Good afternoon. I formally declare open this planning committee meeting of the Colacawa Shire Council on the 12th of October 2022. Almighty God, we seek your blessing and guidance in our deliberations on behalf of the people of the Colacawa Shire. Enable this council's decision to be those that contribute to the true welfare and betterment of our community. I would like to start this afternoon by acknowledging the traditional custodians and lawmakers of this land, their elders past and present, and welcome any descendants here today. I would like to advise that this planning committee meeting will be recorded and live streamed with the exception of confidential matters. This includes the public participation sections of meetings. The live stream recording of this afternoon's meeting will be available on the website as soon as practical. By participating in open planning committee meetings, individuals consent to the use and disclosure of the information they share at the meeting, including any personal and or sensitive information. Please note that it is an offence to make an unauthorised recording of the meeting. Can members of the gallery please turn off their phones or turn them onto silent? Uh, I note that all councillors are present. Are there any declarations of interest, please? No. I propose that we move to confirm the minutes from the planning committee meeting held on the 14th of September 2022. Do I have a mover? Councillor Coston, do I have a seconder? No, Councillor Bell, is that to be opposed? No. Uh, I'll now call for a vote. All those in favour? The items carried 6-0. Verbal submissions from those applicants and objectors who have confirmed in writing that they wish to speak to their submission will be heard prior to the consideration of the agenda item. A li limit of five minutes will apply to each submitter. Okay, now we move to item 8.1. The purpose of this report is to consider a two-lot subdivision of land at 1 to 7 Cartwright Street, Apollo Bay. Um, we have verbal submissions uh, from four objectors. Cornelis Verstig, Graham Honey, Kay Hill and Steve Hodge via video conference and then we'll hear a submission from the applicant Natalie Anderson. Uh, I'll now call on Cornelis Verstig to um, make his submission. Thank you very much for the opportunity to say a few words. Um, we objected because we live there most of the time and the, we feel that the character of the neighbourhood is changing dramatically. Steve Hodge is now joining. Uh, and the design and development overlay states clearly to ensure that permeable space is available between dwellings and sustain, to sustain vegetation and to ensure that the new development maintains space between buildings so that the views to the surroundings landscape are retained. I do know there's a subdivision and not a building proposed, but because of, the, as the zoning is, any lot over 300 square meters does not require a further input from the uh, planning permit, uh, no, opportun no opportunity to uh, object later on. So the only time we can do that is now. As it is only 135 square meters, a two-lot dwelling will be required uh, for any one. And therefore, uh, uh, that is, and up to eight meters, you don't require a further planning permit. Uh, also, the application must accurate, accurate, accurately describe, in, according to 56011, the natural features, including trees and other significant vegetation. The trees are sketched on the application, but I wouldn't say accurately described. There are mainly native trees there, and some are quite old. Are they not important at all? A lot of them will be detrimental to the neighborhood and the many neighbor, native birds that are there now and will degrade the neighborhood character. The, also, the significant views to and from the site are not described, another dot point. Uh, and the, uh, the, the significant views are ignored in application and in our assessment detrimentally affected from all surrounding properties. Furthermore, it is a slope block and no contours are shown in the plans that we have seen anyway. The neighborhood character 
the immediate neighborhood it has enclosed by the street blocks uh, being uh, Cartwright, Noel, Diana, and Nelson Street already has a quite large number of small blocks, as can be seen in the planning property report, and, to, and but there are already more small, smaller lots than larger lots. And there are also six empty large lots. lots. There is no need for destruction of the neighborhood uh, character and division into small lots should be uh, avoided. Then there is no need for that at all. All the current dwellings, also the ones on the smaller lots, leverage ambience and character from the open spaces and the gardens with wildlife and privacy and views. And that should not be destroyed. What can happen if it all small buildings with uh, now open spaces in between is what you can see at the end of uh, Null Street near Trafalgar Street, close to the golf course. There's a whole set of lots uh, between three and 400 square meters. And even before the houses are all built, it is already uh, no, quite ugly in a hard surface area, drafty neighborhood, which would be okay maybe close to the uh, center of Melbourne, but would not be appropriate for Apollo Bay. If we can avoid that in our area, that would be great. Uh, also, we note because there are uh, already uh, six empty lots, large lots there, there is really no need to subdivide more lots. As the, uh, uh, the planning rules say, the council also needs to consider the availability of subdivided land in the locality and the need to create further lots. There is no need for that. So, thank you very much. I hope that you make the look at the long-term benefits of the whole area. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much uh, for your submission. Are there any questions? No. Thank you very much. Um, I'll now call on uh, Mr Honey to make his submission. Uh, thank you for her hearing my um, submission. Um, in February 2019, my wife and I purchased the vacant land 38A Nile Street at Polo Bay, which is uh, on the eastern side of Cornelius' home. Um, we then had a house built on this land and we moved into the house in October 2020. Uh, the purchase of the land and the build was a considerable, considerable expense to us. Prior to this, we'd lived in Torquay for the past 28 years and our main reason for moving to Apollo Bay was to get away from the current busyness, what is now present day Torquay, and to semi-retire there. Um, over at our north facing back balcony, which is on the first floor, we currently enjoy views to the north of our property. These views are of the ocean, hills, trees and wildlife. Our fears are that if the subdivision goes ahead, a lot of our views will be replaced with the brickwork or the whatever material that is constructed on this um, subdivision. Um, so my, my main submission would be that, that a house built there would severely impact on um, the, the value and the livability of um, 38A, which is Noel Street, which is our property, and even more so for Cornelius, because any um, dwelling built on this subdivision would is in a direct line of his current views of the ocean. Um, however, if, if the council did um, rule in favour of the applicant, uh, I'd strongly consider that if they put a, um, I think it's called, called a caveat on the property, a, a build of only six and a half metres, that they could still, uh, the people who were to build a new property would still get views of the ocean and uh, the hills and so forth. But the impact on, um, uh, for, for on myself and uh, more so Cornelius would be um, far, a lot more minimal compared to, say, as an eight and a half metre property. Uh, that's about all. Thank you. Thank you very much for your submission. Are there any questions? No, thank you very much. I'll now call on Kay Hill to make her submission. Good evening, everyone. Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I hate microphones. <laughs> um, 
I'm the owner of number 11 and 13 Cartwright Street, Apollo Bay. I strongly object to this proposal for the following reasons and quote from the Colac Otway Planning Scheme. 11.03-6L is the policy application. The object objective is this, is to enhance Apollo Bay as a dis distinct coastal settlement with its own character. Uh, section 1307-1S is land use strategies. Unsure that, ensure that the use or development of the land is compatible with the adjoining and nearby land use. Uh, section 15 states, planning should ensure all land and development appropriately to its surrounding landscape and character. And 1501-1S is strategies states, it requires development to respond in terms of character, natural features and surrounding landscapes. In regard to the neighbourhood character, subdivision of 7 Cartwright Street is not compatible with adjoining properties, will go, go against the character of the existing neighbourhood. It will not integrate with the surrounding urban air environment because of the significant slope on the land. Any house built on the proposed lot two would tower over the neighbouring backyards. The existing single detached houses on numbers 11, 9 and 7 Cartwright have been established for over 50 years. It is not a flat road. In fact, there's a very steep gradient here. Number 7 is on the higher side of number 9 and 11. And by subdividing the property, it would impact on the loss of privacy of both numbers 9 and 11 properties. Apart from the, the noise level, um, it's, it's amazing how noise carries from a higher, a higher building. The existing four bedroom dwelling on 7 Cartwright Street is used as a holiday rental and at the weekend has four vehicles parked in the driveway and, and a fifth on the side curb, or the curb side. Already there's been an impact of noise levels since the, pro the property at 38A Knoll Street has been built as it's on high ground. For the moment, privacy has been retained as the existing garden at number seven Cartwright Street has protected us. But with the planned subdivision and removal of vegetation, our backyards will be exposed. Uh, regarding na native flora and fauna, the gardens of these existing houses, including coal if Cartwright Street, Knoll Street and Nelson Street are well established and for a number of years we've been fortunate to have daily and nightly visits from koalas who make use of all the trees, not only the gums, using them for shelter in high wind storms and as a protection from predators. It would be disappointing if the proposed subdivision with the removal of the gum tree and other vegetation puts a stop to the koalas visiting us. I trust that the objections will be considered in relation to this application. I have got photos depicting the slope of the land in case anyone hasn't looked at it, um, because it is quite a steep block. And the subdivision on a flat block can go unnoticed, but not, not in this case. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. Any questions? Thank you. Are there any questions? No, thank you. Thanks very much for your submission. Uh, I'll now call on Mr Steve Hodge via video conference. I did have listed here Steve Hodge by via video conference. Um, yeah, if you could turn your mic on. Is Steve Hodge on video conference? If you could turn your mic on, then we could hear you. Steve... Steve Hodge, can you hear us?
Is there anybody else online that is an objector and wants to speak, make a submission? Ah. Steve, can you hear us now, Steve Hodge? Can you please turn your microphone on, Steve Hodge, if you're online? I think what we might do is while we try to get Steve is um, hear from the applicant, Natalie Anderson. Can you hear us, Natalie? Yeah, I can hear. Can you hear me? We can hear you very loudly. We'll just adjust it one moment. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, that's fine. We can adjust it here. So, yeah, if you could make your um, submission, that would be fantastic. Thank you. Um, look, I would just rely, um, and Rod, please um, speak up um, as you see fit. We are not applying um, for a building permit. We're applying to um, have permission to subdivide the block. Um, I think some of the assertions put forward are making a lot of assumptions about what the intended use of the property may or may not be. We certainly, um, I think some of the things that have been put forward are factually incorrect um, and, you know, basically we're, we're if you look around the surrounding district, there's certainly um, multiple precedents and I believe that we are um, consistent with what is already um, apparent in terms of the planning in Apollo Bay. So I don't think that it's in any way consistent, inconsistent, that what, what we're asking for. I mean, some of the, um, you know, some of the objectors are themselves sitting on subdivided blocks of land and are not permanent residents in the area. Um, I think that it's just far too presumptuous to assume anything other than what we are applying for is the opportunity to subdivide our land within the planning scheme as it sits uh, consistently with what um, we've been told is um, appropriate and reasonable use of the land. We've done the planning around what we would need to do to make um, the slope and the drainage and all of those sorts of things work. And beyond that, um, I don't think that it's really fair to assume what we may or may not um, be planning to do on the block of land. What trees would need to be removed? What trees wouldn't need to be removed? I mean, um, case you specifically asked me to trim trees on our block of land that would impact on habitat um, because to, to improve your view. So I think it's a little bit rich to talk about habitat when people have specifically asked us to modify the trees in the, in the existing backyard. We don't have that gum tree um, that Kay, you're, you're talking about. That actually sits on nine, not seven. Um, so there's a couple of things that are just a little bit inconsistent and I'd also reject the um, the assertion that there's four cars and a fifth car on the street every weekend. It's not just used as a holiday rental, it is a very cherished holiday house of ours which we have spent considerable money improving. We actually love Apollo Bay, we want anything that we do to be amenable to um, the surroundings and we would not ever be proposing something that we think would detract from the area. Clearly others have been able to do this and they've done it well. Um, so I think so long as we're within the planning scheme, I don't, I don't understand what the, what the possible objections could be. Where our family with kids, um, we want to look at the possibilities, we want to stay in the town, 
it's not true to say that we are not from the town and we're not trying to, um, you know, so I, th I think the, some of the content of some of the objections has been really disappointing to us because we have felt quite welcomed there prior to this um, point. But I guess all of that aside, which is a bit unfortunate, you know, um, really I think what we're doing is just putting in an application in good faith within the planning guidelines um, for a subdivision and I don't think I, I don't think we can jump forward to um, what might happen if we're looking at the back of a brick wall because that I, I don't think that's fair. I think that's just um, an assumption. So that's pretty much it. Rod, do you have anything that you could add to that? Oh, can you hear me there? We can hear you. Can you can hear me. Yeah, look, you've pretty much covered it there, Natalie. Thanks for that. But there's um, a bit of concern there from some of the neighbours about building on the slope. I'd just like to point out that there's four houses in Cartwright Street comfortably built on that slope. I don't think that is really an issue. And again, it's 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 uh, it's it's more objections in the direction of what might happen or what could go wrong. But we really just want the planning committee to focus on what's being um, applied for, and that's a two lot subdivision. And then uh, anything that happens on the vacant lot, of course, would be subject to the uh, planning provisions in force at the time. Thank you. Um, yeah, pretty much covers it. I think that's over to the committee. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions uh, uh, for the applicant? Uh, Councillor Hart. Thanks, Mayor, and thanks for um, the submissions from all the people today. Um, I've been provided with a site plan, which I understand was part of your application, which has a building envelope and a common property, which seems to indicate that there's trees on where the common property is. Um, approximately the north side of the existing lot and several trees in the building envelope. So wouldn't it be the case that there'd be several trees to be removed if something was built on this site? That's, oh, yeah, so there's a few trees that are not significant that would need to, to go. They're decorative shrubs, mostly in the common property. Uh, there's... Um, the largest tree, they're drawn to scale. Uh, the largest trees are at the back. It might be possible to build around those. Um, I don't think they're significant. They're gums. Um, they're not particularly big and they're not um, particularly uh, good specimens. Thank you. Are there any further questions? Councillor Potter. Uh, thanks, Mayor. Just in relation to um, the concerns of the submitters, um, do you think you're being a little bit uh, dismissive given that um, this proposal is for uh, for a subdivision um, and quite rightly this planning committee can only consider that? Um, but that in itself gives, gives rise to something that's going to be um, built and... Uh, the, the neighbours are concerned um, about, about their views. Can you give them any um, uh, satisfaction about what the future might hold for them? Well, it would be speculative, but uh, I think they can uh, find some comfort in the fact that they are very high up above the proposed vacant allotment. Um, there's quite a big view from their balconies. Uh, and uh, a single story dwelling probably would impact on their view. Who knows what's going to go in there? Two story dwelling may take a small portion of it. Um, but that's, you know, that's speculative. All right, thank you. Are there any further questions from councillors? Yes. All right, if there's no further questions, thank you very much for your submission. Um, Natalie and Rod. I'll now just call on just one last time to see if um, Steve Hodge is on the line. Steve Hodge, can you hear us?
Right. I, I believe oh, Mr Hodge is overseas, which might be the reason why he's having he's difficulties. Um, councillors have received Mr Hodge's written submission. It, it's in our papers. So we can, we can review his written submission. So we, we do have his submission. Um, but if we if we can't get him online, which it appears to be the case, we're, we're going to have to. Steve. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, He's we now can hear exiting. you. Yes, Hello there. go ahead. Apologies for all the uh, difficulties. We're we're overseas in Ireland at the moment, and uh, we had difficulty connecting and uh, being accepted in the meeting. Um, and equally, I've only heard snatches of what's uh, what's happened before, or what what's been. Uh, so before, so look, uh, apologies if there's any, uh, if I'm speaking out of sequence now and if uh, certain things have been talked about before. So we, Farrah and myself, we own number seven, car, sorry, number nine Carwright Street, which is directly below number seven, the applicant. Um, and we strongly object to the application. Um, firstly, looking through the planning scheme, um, Section 56 requires, uh, which talks about neighbourhood character objectives, uh, says that subdivision should respect the existing neighbour neighbourhood character and integrate the surrounding urban environment. Um, so this area is a, it's a series of matching or complementary blocks, um, which has been referred to as the dress circle of Apollo Bay. Um, subdivision and eventual construction would be at the centre of seven or eight blocks and completely ruin the appearance and livability of the zone by either blocking views or overlooking. Um, and I, I did hear um, the applicant talk about it's presumptuous to think that something's going to be built there, but at the end of the day, why else would they be subdividing? It's a very specious argument. Um, section 43, design objectives talks about must be permeable space between dwellings to sustain vegetation. Construction of a building will be a barrier to permeable space. Uh, and it also says uh, views the surrounding landscapes are retained. Um, such views would not be retained uh, by surrounding properties, particularly those up here on the number seven. Section 65. Um, I think this is important. Approval and application to subdivide land must consider the availability of subdivided land in the locality. Clearly, there's a multitude of vacant and subdivided land in the near vicinity where development would be welcomed. And there's no need to spoil this particular zone. Uh, on a more personal level, being directly below the subdivision, um, our entire back garden will eventually be overlooked and also will be faced with a, a front-to-back driveway of presumably at least 25 metres um, abutting the side fence and right next to our bedroom. And if the traffic in and out of number seven is uh, duplicated, uh, we'll be constantly disturbed. In terms of the bigger picture, the subdivision and eventual development will not improve the major issue facing the Polar Bay, that is the lack of rental accommodation for workers. The development will clearly be used for holiday rentals and Airbnb and only contribute further to over-demand of services in the town. So inclusion under uh, what I see as decision guidelines, section six, the application of the subdivision, uh, the application of any subdivision, this application is not appropriate. So that's all I had to say. And again, sorry if I've, uh, I've, I've repeated things. No, thank you very much for your submission. Are there any questions? Um, yes, um, I, well, it's not a question, but it's Natalie, I'm sorry. It's not, it is not true to say I think we that just we had to use that as a holiday rental. Okay, Natalie, we, we, did, we did hear that in your submission, and, and um, I guess this isn't a debate between um, objectors and applicants. And I guess, it, you know, in all fairness to you, that you um, we have had an, a, a um, submission after um, after your um, you've made your submission. So if you if you just want to be brief, I'll give you a chance because you didn't get a chance. Well, I. I 
I really object to the assertion that we plan to use any building that we built on that area as a holiday rental. I, I just flat out reject that. Okay. Um, that, it, that is not true. So I, I, I just want to put that on the record. We're very aware of the rental issues in Apollo Bay and actually we would like to look into permanent rental and not that it is anyone's business, but I am actually looking at having something for my elderly parents. So I, I just I, I want to put that on the record that that is inappropriate to assume that um, that is the case. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, councillors. Um, yes, go ahead, Councillor Coston. Thank you, Mayor. Natalie, um, it's been suggested that the height limit in, of any building in the proposed subdivision or the subdivided lot should be 6.5 metres. Can, what do you think about that? I think that's really reasonable. Um, and I, I think the assertions put through that um, objection were reasonable. Um, I guess that's why I'm getting a little passionate about the things that aren't reasonable in my view. Um, and look, you know, there is a there is a lovely view, filtered view through the the trees in number nine um, from ground level. So you know, there's options that um, you know. I'm very passionate about good design. I'm very passionate about the aesthetics. Um, so you know, there's multiple opportunities from that very beautiful little private block to build something that would well and truly not impinge on um, the behind, the people behind, yeah. Thank you. So I take it from that you'd be comfortable if we were able to make that restriction. No, I'm not sure whether we can. I might just jump in there, Natalie, excuse me. I yeah. might just jump in there. Um, six and a half metres is below the, the usual you'd expect on a suburban lot of seven and a half metres. Most of the abutting dwellings are two-storey. Uh, six and a half metres is almost squeezing you out of a two-storey option. That would uh, potentially devalue the lot. Uh, we're not proposing uh, any height restrictions on the block. It would be subject to the building code at the time. Most of the dwellings there are two-storey, so I don't think it would be appropriate to pick one lot out of maybe 20 in that block to have a height restriction on it wouldn't be fair. We don't know what's going there. But I noticed that there's at least seven other unit sites on that neighbourhood block. No, I don't think you should single out one lot out of the 25 or so lots that are on that block and put a height restriction on it. Thanks, Rod. Thanks for the clarification. Thank you. Have you got a question for the applicant, yeah. Councillor White? Thank you. Um, a lot of the objectors are very concerned about the flora and fauna and trees and tree removal. Um, can you give them some sort of reassurance that the block won't be just raised of all, all vegetation? And um, just wondering what your thoughts are around that. No, it's not proposed to remove any trees. We're not proposing to remove any trees. That would be for some um, future owner or, um, you know, at the time of future development, you'd, you'd look at what you want to build and then you think about what trees you can retain and how you could work around them. That's normal planning and building procedure. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Uh, thank you very much to this uh, submitters. Uh, do councillors have any questions of officers? Uh, Councillor Coston and Councillor Potter. Um, thank you, Glenn. Um, in relation to the building permit regulations, what protections does that give in terms of overlooking of lots in front and or removal of trees? Yeah, they, it, it's not uncommon uh, when you're building to so, have... Sorry, Rod, uh, it's a sorry, question, question, the, question sorry, to the officers. a question for the officers. Yep. So... I'll say it again, Doug, in, in some downtown the, down the track there will be a building permit issued if the subdivision goes ahead. There are protections, I understand, um, about overlooking into other people's properties during that building 
permit process. Can you just talk through that and also in relation to the removal of trees? Uh, through you, Mayor, um, and I start by saying obviously I'm not a building surveyor, so it's my interpretation of uh, an understanding of the building regulations. But in essence, um, I understand them to reflect Clause 54 of the planning scheme. To reflect Clause 54 of the planning scheme, which basically sets out um, standards for things like setbacks, overlooking, overshadowing, etc., on new sites for development. So in terms of overlooking, the standard basically is that you should not overlook any secluded private open space or any habitable room windows within nine meters um, of a habitable room or elevated, uh, so a balcony or anything like that, similarly should not overlook anything within nine meters that, as I say, is habitable open space or secluded private open space or a habitable room window. So there's protection through those controls automatically. There's no right to overlook another property. Um, in terms of trees, this is a site in a general residential zone. It's a, a standard size lot for um, this type of zone. There's no protection over the trees per se. Somebody could go on the site now and actually clear the trees. Um, generally with development sites, it's when they're being developed, somebody will look and see whether they can retain it for their own amenity as much as their neighbor's amenity, but the trees aren't protected. Thank you, Bohin. We received the building envelope sent through to us, and that would seem to be a little bit inconsistent with building regulations. Uh, through you, Mayor, again, the planning scheme says that lots of between 300 square metres and 500 square metres should show a building envelope to demonstrate it could be developed in an appropriate way. Um, it's not necessarily saying the development will be exactly there um, and any future development would be required to comply with setbacks, so side setbacks, rear setbacks, etc. We wouldn't be putting that as a restriction on title, um, so compliance would be required with building permit re requirements in terms of setbacks, overlooking, overshadowing, and all those matters. Um, thank you. Could you just talk through your assessment of the neighbourhood character of this proposal and the, in terms of the neighbourhood character overlay? Um, through you, Mayor, um, there isn't actually a neighbourhood character overlay on the site. Um, so it's basically in the general residential zone and there's a design and development overlay. Um, that design and development overlay relates to medium density residential areas. So basically we're in a residential area where it's anticipated that it won't necessarily stay low density. Um, medium density is in effect sought in this area. Um, the overlay allows the construction of a dwelling on a lot of 300 square meters or more without a planning permit. Um, so this gives us a little bit of an indication of what can be expected within the area. Um, there are numerous examples of smaller lots in the area um, at 42, 44, 49 Knoll Street, um, 33, 43, 45, 47 Nelson Street, 17 Knoll Street, 12 Knoll Street that have lot sizes that go as low as 173 square metres up to somewhere over 300 square metres. So it's quite varied in terms of the character of the area. Um, it's very understandable that people want to protect views, but the unfortunate thing sometimes with coastal areas is if you're a couple of blocks back from the sea, you can't necessarily expect that there won't be other developments that occurs in the future in front of your block. Um, but there is a requirement for permeability between dwellings, and you'll see even in the indicative building envelope that's shown, it displays a garden area that would maintain space potentially between the existing dwelling on the lot and the proposed dwelling. There's a 2.2 metre easement that obviously wouldn't be developed over at the rear of the block. 
but again, maintain some permeability. So it doesn't give a total right to a view or for your view to be maintained exactly as it is, but for a, a sharing of views, if you like, with new development anticipated. Councillor Potter. Thanks, Mayor, and thanks, Councillor Costa, for some good questions there. And I think you just answered this, uh, Bohem, but in relation to neighbours trying to um, perhaps protect their, their interests, um, this is their final opportunity, assuming, and it is an assumption, that there may be, um, if this permit is granted, a, a building um, constructed, um, which the, which if it complies with the rules, the, the neighbours don't, can't have any input into. Is that right? Um, again, as I said, I'm not a building surveyor, but my understanding is um, if there are variations of setbacks or anything like that, there has to be consultation with neighbours. But if it complies with all the standard setbacks, overlooking, protections, overshadowing, etc., cetera, then um, I, I believe it would just be a case that a building permit could be issued. Thanks, Mayor. Um, and uh, Councillor Coston touched on this. We heard from one of the uh, objectors in relation to, uh, to a height limit being imposed on any um, fu future development. Are councils uh, allowed to Im impose that as a condition of a permit? Um, and is that a uh, accepted or a good practice in your view and experience? Uh, through you, Mayor, um, I would say it could be done, but it wouldn't be good practice. Um, we are in a medium density residential area that um, exempts dwellings from the requirement for a planning permit if they're under eight metres in height. Um, to impose a covenant on one lot in the DDO6 area. Um, wouldn't be good practice. Councillor Hart. Oh, did you have a further question? Go ahead, and then Councillor Hart. Uh, thanks, Mayor. S sorry, Councillor Hart. Um, yeah, I can't remember what the question was now. <laughs> I'll get back to it. Councillor Hart. Uh, thanks, Mayor. Uh, I just want to clarify this issue of the height, um, height limit or not a height limit. Um, if it was... If someone wants to build something greater than eight metres high, would they require a planning permit? Did I understand that correctly? So I think it's actually eight metres or higher triggers the requirement for a permit. You can have a single dwelling on a lot, must be over 300 square metres and must be eight metres or less in height not to trigger the requirement for a planning permit. So eight metres or higher would trigger the requirement for a planning permit. So, so if there's no, if it's um, thought to be less than eight metres and no planning permits required is what I'm hearing, then what's the mechanism and how does it get picked up if someone says, oh, well, that's actually nine metres or 10 metres? How does that get picked up if there's no planning permit? When would that get picked up and what would the process be dealing with that? Um, through you, Mayor, um, the responsibility of the building surveyor is to make sure that a building permit, when it's issued, is um, consistent with planning controls. So they, the building surveyor would need to be satisfied that the design that they approve is less than eight metres or alternatively ensure that there is a planning permit sought um, and it's again the building surveyor's role to then sign off on the building once it's finished to be consistent with the building permit. Having said that, if there was ever any concern raised with council by a neighbour that the building appeared to be taller than eight metres, then they could ask for council's compliance officers to, to investigate that. And you know, there have been cases in the past where, you know, because of those concerns, officers have then asked an applicant to demonstrate through survey or some other means that the building height is um, within the controls. Yeah, thanks, Mayor. And whilst I'm not suggesting any um, particular buildings proposed for this, I think it's an important issue to understand these processes. So, what is the eight metres from? Is it, you know, could you, if you dig down, is it or, or raise the 
level or how's the eight, I appreciate you've said there might be a survey to demonstrate it's eight metres or less. What What is that measurement from? Um, building height is based on natural ground level. So if you dig down, you don't get the added benefit, if you like. Um, or you do get the added benefit. Yeah, so you can build up and then construct on top of it. Councillor Coston. Councillor Potter. Oh, thanks, Mayor. Um, Councillor got a number of matters before VCAT. Um, one in particular um, arising out of uh, perhaps an issue around amenity. I, I know. Uh, um, I spoke about that in relation to a matter. If a permit was not granted uh, for this subdivision, um, just in your experience and, and um, expertise, given the uh, legislation around this, um, do you view that as a defendable position by, by council in the future? Uh, through you, Mayor, the tribunal member would look at the planning controls applicable to the site. So there's no minimum lot size in the general residential zone. There's no minimum lot size in the, under the DDO. Um, there's an allowance for constructing a dwelling on a lot greater than 300 square meters. It's a medium density residential area. Um, so I think it would be very, very difficult to defend a refusal. Are there any further questions? Councillor Coston. Um, we've heard from the objectors and we've heard a number of um, suggestions that it's contrary to clause such and such or whatever in the planning scheme. In, is there anything in the planning scheme that provides a solid footing for us to refuse the permit? Anything quite solid? Anything that would stand up at VCAT? I think that's where Council Potter was going. Uh, through you, Mayor, and having regard to the specific controls over the site um, and general policy, I would say there's nothing that um, a reason for refusal could be hung on, if you like, and on this particular site. Okay, if there's no further questions, uh, councillors, the officers have provided a recommendation for our consideration, does any councillor wish to move a motion in relation to this matter? Councillor Bell. You'll move the um, officer recommendation. Is there a seconder? Councillor White, is it to be opposed? No? Uh, discussion? Uh, I might just discuss it, Mayor, yeah. yeah. Uh, councillor Bell is the mover. Thanks, Mayor. Um, firstly, I just wanted to thank the um, submitters today uh, and acknowledge the applicant and the, um, the people who have objected to it. I understand that this is a not necessarily a complicated matter, but it's one where you know, a, fair, a fair amount of uh, emotional energy can, can be spent um, trying to understand what different views people have. Um, ultimately, we as councillors will be trying to look through um, the lens of one where it's trying to align with the planning scheme and I'm certainly trying to do that at the moment while taking into account some of the other uh, considerations that may potentially arise from um, a subsequent uh, subdivision which, which we should be probably in some regards looking at in isolation. Um, I, I'm pretty comfortable um, in the assessment that the um, council officers have, have concluded with, um, it, it appears to be in line with the, the planning scheme. Um, I understand um, the components that have been raised um, against the planning scheme, but I think um, we've been reassured today um, through the council officers that um, you know, they are in line with, um, with the planning scheme. I understand the, the challenges around or the potential threat to existing views um, and also to biodiversity matters that, that may um, result from um, impact through building of dwellings at a later date. Um, 
again, um, it's down the path and it is quite possible that um, the, the objectors will get another opportunity to, to be consulted through that process if it comes to that. I don't, I don't really think, um, having some level of understanding in ecology, that there would be any um, demonstrated net loss to, to biodiversity values in the area, even if some trees were potentially impacted by a subsequent um, development or, or building of a dwelling. Um, certainly um, not um, beyond what a landscape um, condition may or may not be at a later date if it was required. So again, I'm comfortable from, from the biodiversity point of view. Again, I just wanted to, um, to demonstrate I'm aware of you know, the, the emotional um, considerations that go into this decision. Um, but in the end, I think um, you know, I'm comfortable as a councillor that the planning scheme has been considered, the objectors have been heard, um, and, and as a result, I'll support the, the recommendation that is in front of me today. Uh, thank you, Councillor Bell. Councillor White. Thanks, Mayor. I think um, Councillor Bell summed it up really for me. I, I'm in reading the council, the officer's recommendations and the thorough presentation of the report. I, I can't see, even though I really understand where the objectives are coming from, and there's always um, people who are going to be impacted personally when things change in their neighbourhood, but I think the planning scheme would not allow for us to not um, approve this permit, so therefore I'm going to support it. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Potter, are you objecting or just discussion? Oh, well, I'll object if it uh, gives yeah. me the opportunity to discuss, Mayor, yeah. so yeah. Councillor Potter. Thank you. Um, Look, um, I've heard loud and clear uh, the concerns of the objectors and um, I, th I think they're, they're valid concerns and one of the attractions of living in the coast uh, and especially Apollo Bay is the ability to build a house and take in a view. But the planning scheme doesn't lock that in and when you uh, have that view, enjoy it because it is uh, possible to lose it, which is a fear um, that we've heard from the neighbours here today. And um, I've got uh, three calls of page and notes in relation to the housing crisis in Apollo Bay and the Airbnb situation and the need for housing for, for workers and so forth. But I did take a lot of heart from what Natalie said in relation to that issue. Um, and um, even uh, a concession which may or may not come to fruition down the track in relation to a height restriction. But I appreciate what she said in relation to um, the, the housing situation in Apollo Bay and that she knows it and she recognises it. So I'm not going to uh, talk about what issues that uh, continual Airbnb use of houses have created in Apollo Bay. So it comes back to the planning scheme and um, there's not much wriggle room for councils on this. There's not much wriggle room to allow us to support um, the objectors in relation to the concerns with the, with the views and so forth. So whilst I've heard them and um, I, I agree with them. I'm, I'm not too sure that if if councillors did not support um, the the application, that uh, if we did end up in VCAT, we'd end up spending um, 15, 20, 25 grand of ratepayers' money f for no reason. And whilst that's not necessarily a reason for making a decision, uh, we're obliged to be careful with money and we should take that into account. So. Um, I'll listen uh, to any other councils of the summing up and um, cast my vote when you call for it, Mayor. Thank you. Does any other councillor wish to speak? Councillor Hart. Yeah, thanks, Mayor, and thank you to the um, people who came in today to speak to their objections and thanks to the applicant for speaking to their application. I think that um, one of the concerns that have been raised about this application, which is for a subdivision, are understandably relate to a building on this property and, and we don't know what will be built there, although it's, I think it's quite reasonable to assume that if you subdivide a block off in a residential zone, sooner or later there's going to be a dwelling constructed 
on the block. And I look at look at the subdivision for this general area. There's there's many other small lots nearby. I actually think it's a possible weakness of the planning scheme that we're meant to consider today just the issue of the subdivision, although it's it's quite apparent that, as I say, if you subdivide a block in a residential area sooner or later, someone will want to construct a dwelling, yet there'll be no input into that provided the dwelling's under eight metres. So I think the way the planning scheme is constructed, we really... I don't see that we have any choice other than to grant a um, application for this subdivision. I, I do hope that if a building is constructed on the property, there's consideration to the issues that have been raised. We're told that there has to be. Uh, but the, the path to deal with that, I, I don't think that was made entirely clear today because I... I can't see that that application will be advertised for comment, whereas when you put into a planning application, it is advertised for comment. So I'm happy to listen to the other argument of the other councillors today, but I think it'd, it'd be difficult to justify a refusal, but I, I, I do wonder whether that's a weakness of the planning scheme that we're only to look at the subdivision aspects when quite clearly a subdivision in a residential zone will, sooner or later, result in a, a dwelling. You would, you would expect that's why it has been subdivided, so a dwelling can be constructed. Thank you, Councillor Hart. Does any other councillor wish to speak? Uh, councillors, I'll now call for a vote. All those in favour? Uh, the items carried 6-0. Thank you, councillors. That concludes this planning committee meeting of the Colac Otway Shire. I declare this meeting closed.